YouTube channel Tobifree. In today's video, I am going to explain you about Thevenin's theorem in the subject of basic electrical engineering. So before this, we understood what is superposition, what is Norton's, and now we are going coming to Thevenin's theorem. So before this, I would recommend you to watch Norton's theorem video um, because it is very much similar to that, and it will be very easier for you to understand if you have already watched that video. Okay. So let's get into the definition. As I already said, if you just go through the definition of this theorem, you will not understand anything. If you go through the example problem and if you solve the example problem along with me, have a pen and paper with you, solve it along with me, then only you will understand. Okay? First, a linear bidirectional two terminal network can be replaced with an equivalent network consisting of voltage VTH connected in series with resistor RTH. Same in Norton's also we saw something similar like this something similar to this right but in Norton's what we are doing is we are taking I n that is we are taking a current source and we are connecting that current source in parallel with the resistance but in case of Thevenin we are taking voltage source and we are connecting that voltage source in series connection with RTH okay that is the only difference. So what is VTH then? It is Thevenin's voltage and RTH is Thevenin's resistance. So VTH is when you open circuit the voltage at the terminals and you will be getting RTH as an input resistance at terminals when the independent sources are turned off. Same, same thing. So in um, Norton's theorem we had Rn but here we are having RTH that is the only difference. Okay. So in Norton's theorem, you are connecting current in parallel with the resistance. In Thevenin's theorem, you are connecting voltage in series with the resistance. Okay. So without any further delay, let's quickly go into the example problem so that you will understand it in more a better way. Guys, this is our example problem and your question is to find out the current. You have to find out the current through the load resistance. Here is the load resistance RL when it is equal to 6 ohms and it is equal to 16 ohms that is 16 ohms you have two cases over here in case 1 rl is equal to 6 ohms in case 2 rl is equal to how much 16 ohms okay so first what you have to do you have to find out vth you have to find out rth and replace this big circuit diagram with the circuit diagram which is having only vth rth and then you can find out the currents first let us do for v t h for v t h what you have to do you have to remove the load okay first you remove the load and do the open circuit okay then how our new diagram will be it's your new circuit diagram right from the circuit diagram from this circuit diagram, we removed this RL and we did open circuit. Okay. So now using this, you have to find out VTH. Let's see how to find out VTH. So basically, where is VTH? Here. But this one, it is an open circuit, right? It will be open circuit. So here the potential will be VTH. Here also at this point also the potential will be VTH only because we don't have any resistors over here. So anyways it is not going to change. Okay. So for, for this branch also it will be VTH only. So we have to find out the voltage over here which is nothing but VTH. Why? See don't get confused because this is an open circuit. Here current is equal to zero. So there will be no potential. I mean there will be no voltage drop or voltage rise. So it will be the same VTH at this point also. Coming to this point here, there is no volt, uh, resistors or here there is no resistors. So it will be same VTH over here also. Here it might change because we have 4 ohms and 12 ohms resistors acting over here. Right? So let us consider this branch. Okay? This branch means so this is 4 ohms this is 12 ohms and we have to find out the potential over here so on doing this on looking at this what do you remember you can do nodal analysis okay you can either do kcl or kv whatever is 
suitable for that for this diagram so assume all the currents directions now so assume all the currents as outgoing currents as i already told you if you if the direction of current is not given you have to assume it okay so we are assuming that all the currents are going outwards now let us so what will be our kcl equation i1 plus i2 sorry plus i3 is equal to 0 this is this will be our kcl equation right so from this small diagram i1 plus i2 plus i3 is equal to 0 we got okay that means i1 is here i2 is here i3 is here okay i just don't want to complicate this diagram so i'm showing it over here clearly to you so what will be i1 i1 is where here so i1 is going like this right so from bth so from higher potential to lower potential current will go always so it is starting here and going like this so vth minus 32 divided by what is the resistance here 4 plus what is i2 i2 is where here this is i2 right so this is i2 so vth minus here uh, assume the initial voltage as v0 v0 which is nothing but 0 again divided by how much 12 plus where is i3 i3 is here i3 is here but if you look here here you have a current source right so i3 is coming like this i3 is coming in this direction it is this current source is coming in this direction that is it is coming in the opposite direction of i3 so what will be the value of i3 minus 2 directly because we already have a current source here is equal to 0 so if you do lcm how much you will get 3 vth minus 96 plus vth minus v0 minus 2 times 12 is 24 is equal to 0 so v0 is obviously 0 and if you send this to that side it will become 0 again so you will get 4 vth i'm sorry 4 VT, vth uh, minus 120 is equal to 0 which is nothing but 4 vth is equal to 120 and vth should be equal to 120 divided by 4 30 volts so you got the thevenin's voltage vth as how much 30 volts now what is your task your task is to find out the rth okay so where is our original circuit diagram this is our original circuit diagram right so from this we short circuited this and we found out vth but in order to find out rth what you have to do along with open circuiting this you will also have to remove the independent independent sources you have to turn off the independent source that means you have to remove this guy also okay now what will be the modified circuit diagram so in the first step we just removed this rl and we made it open circuit this is the diagram now in the second step in order to find out rth we have to remove this source also so now let us remove that source and draw the new diagram we got our modified circuit diagram now we have open source we have uh, we did open source to all the independent sources that we are having see this is our original diagram let's zoom in or zoom out whatever it is okay so this is our original circuit diagram and this is our new modified diagram because in the previous step we already removed this to find out vth right along with that now what you did you removed the independent sources also here 32 volts voltage is independent source and this 2 amperes current is also independent source right so you removed this one and you removed this one also you removed the voltage source and made it as a short circuit you removed the current source and made it as a open circuit in the superposition theorem we saw right when we are removing the when we are i mean when we are taking off the uh, current source we are making it as open circuit and when we are removing the voltage source we are making it as short circuit so this is our new diagram from this new diagram you have to find out the rth you have to find out the thevenin's resistance and then replace a new circuit this this whole big circuit with a new circuit which is having the voltages as 30 volts and resistance as rth now let's see what we we can do in this in this diagram so basically in this diagram first observe these two 4 ohms and 12 ohms 
they are in parallel connection right 4 ohms and 12 ohms so 1 by r is equal to 1 by 4 plus 1 by 12 that means you will get 3 plus 1 4 by 12 so r is equal to 12 by 4 which is equal to 3 ohms so r is equal to how much 3 ohms 3 ohms is the result equivalent of these two but we also have 1 ohms over here right 1 ohms current so 1 ohms it is connected obviously in series so 3 plus 1 you will get 4 ohms as the equivalent resistance okay so now rth is equal to how much 4 ohms simple you got the value of rth also now you have to draw a new circuit diagram which is having the current sorry which is having the voltage as this 30 volts and the resistance as this 4 ohms let's draw that so voltage source 30 volts and uh, what did you get the thevenin's resistance as 4 ohms okay and this is the rl load resistance right now you have to find out the current passing through this load resistance which is equal to il and the value of load, load resistance is changing okay so before that try to observe this this is our original circuit and this original circuit is replaced with this in the original circuit the voltage is 32 volts but that is replaced with the thevenin's voltage and all the other resistance sources are replaced with the thevenin's resistance okay and the load resistance is as it is now let us find out the current in that load resistance okay this is our new diagram right so what in the question what does it say find out the current when load resistance r is rl is equal to 6 amp, 6 ohms and 16 ohms okay now how do you find out i v is equal to ir that means i is equal to v by r so what is v here 30 30 divided by when r is equal to 6 ohms 30 divided by 6 how much you will get you will get the answer as is it 30 divided by 6 no 30 divided by 6 directly you can't take because you also have here 4 ohms right so 6 plus 4 so which is equal to 30 divided by 10 which is equal to 3 amperes so current due to 6 ohms load resistor is equal to 3 amperes now the same way you have to find out when r is equal to 16 ohms so same i is equal to v divided by v is 30 and the thevenin's resistance is 4 of course these both are connected in series right so that's why we are directly adding it so in this case it is 16 load resistance so 30 divided by 20 which is equal to 3 by 2 which is equal to 1.5 amps okay so this is all about this video guys i hope it is clear for you so we arrived at this thing from let me show you the original diagram where did the original diagram go it went somewhere guys yeah this is the original diagram so from the original diagram we came here how by replacing the voltage source we are calculating the vth and rth here we are connecting VTH and RTH in series with each other. In case of Norton's theorem, what we did, we connected both of them. The current source and the resistance source were connected in parallel. Just go back to the previous video and observe. But here we are connecting both of them in series connection. So this from this we got a new diagram. And from that we are calculating the asked questions. Okay. So that's all for this video guys. Thanks for watching the video till the end. If you still have any doubts, let me know in the comment section. Let's meet up soon in the next coming video with another topic. Thank you so much for watching the video till the end.